So Marco has a collection of 437 antique soda bottles, and each year he buys 32 more. And we want to know how many bottles he'll have in 5 years, or how long it will take for his collection to reach 1,000 bottles. And to do this, we're going to need some notation. And so we're going to start out by introducing, uh, a subscript-based notation for population, or the amount of bottles that he has. We're going to use the term population a lot because we're going to be talking about populations. In this case, it's a population of bottles. So we're going to use p to represent the population, or the number of bottles, and we're going to subscript it with an n. So this would be the number of bottles, uh, that Marco has after n years. So the subscript lets us keep track of which year we're talking about. So p0 would be how many bottles he has after 0 years, or in other words, right now. How many does he have? He has 437 bottles right now, and so p0 is 437. Now, if we wanted to know how many he'll have in year 1, or in other words, after 1 year, we could notice that each year he buys 32 more. So that's 437 plus 32. And 437 plus, uh, 437 plus 32 is 469. Now, notice where this value came from. This was my previous year's amount, so we could, in fact, uh, replace this with p sub 0, and we could say p1 is p0 plus 32. Now notice, my next year, in year 2, I'd have 469 bottles from the previous year, and I've added 32 more to end up with 501. But where did this 469 come from? That was my previous year. That was my p sub 1. So each year, I can figure out how many bottles I have by adding 32 to the previous year's number of bottles, and I can generalize this. I can generalize this idea to say, listen, I start with 437 bottles, and in any given year, the number of bottles I have will be the number I had in the previous year, so n minus 1 is the year before, plus an additional 32. So for example, p3 would be p2, right? Because 3 minus 1 is 2, plus 32. I already know what p2 is. p2 is 501. Add 32. So p3 is 533 bottles. And this equation that we've come up with is called a recursive equation. This is a recursive, recursive equation. A recursive equation is one where the next value depends upon the previous value. And in general, this type of growth that we're looking at here is called linear growth. So this is linear growth. Linear growth is what we get whenever we grow by a constant, when we grow by a constant number amount. So in this case, we're growing by 32 each, each year. So when we have a recursive linear growth, we can always write the equation in the form p, n, so the population in year n, is always going to be the population in the previous year, plus some d, where this is the, what we call a common difference. In other words, it's the amount that we increase by each year. In this case, this value, 32, is my d, it is my common difference. And so this is the general form of a recursive equation. We always have to have our initial amount, our p sub 0, and then we have a recursive equation that will look like this.